Hey fans and subscribers, this is your host Joe on the Gaming for Insight channel with you to bring a video on the connector available from One X Player to use with the Joy-Cons compatible with the X1 devices. And I actually have the connector here with my Joy-Cons attached and I also have the stylus as well that I ordered. So I have been using those for the past week and I wanted to put together this video with some helpful shortcuts as well as some additional features that you might want to know about with your connector and stylus as well. So I do hope you find the video helpful and you can let me know in the comments what you think. But I'm also interested in developing a part two video for this to further explore the One X Player console as well as customizing the buttons on the Joy-Cons. So I want to know from you what you are looking for to do on your One X Player X1. In this video as well, I include an important message that resonates with me from Windec Tech that he has shown recently on his channel, and it has to do with helping animals. So if you are interested in doing that, please stay with the video to look for that message. I've actually included the clip, the same clip that he has used in his recent video. And if you are looking for a new handheld and you also want to help an important cause with animals, then this is a great idea for you to look at further and see if you would like to purchase a handheld from Windec Tech and help an animal or animals in the process of doing that. Oh, and OKS Gamer, thank you for the hat. Much appreciated, my friend. Uh, now, my name's Andrew, otherwise known as Windec Tech on YouTube, and I'm gonna be speaking about a personal mission I believe in. My wife and I volunteer and foster for a rescue organization called Lost Boys Hope. Now, these people go into remote communities within Manitoba, which is located in Canada, and then bring them out to Ontario, which is also located in Canada. For those of you that don't know, a little bit of geography there for you. Anyway, so they go into these remote communities where dogs are left out in the cold, beaten, abused, they're starving, abandoned, ditched, thrown in dumpsters, things like that, they're shot. It, it, it's truly terrible. My second dog that my wife and I have, uh, we adopted them through this organization and her and her litter mates when they were about eight weeks old or so, seven to eight weeks old, I believe it was, if not even younger, they were found in a dumpster. Luckily, someone came across them and thankfully we now have our happy little Bino. Now, with that being said, they do have uh, unexpected vet costs uh, coming up and obviously that cost just ongoing they're 100% donation based they're not government funded or anything like that with that being said I'm going to be starting an eBay auction just on some items that have accumulated over the time of just being on YouTube and I'm going to be donating 50% of the winnings or earnings off the auction and then donating that directly to Lost Boys Hope as well as the other 50% will be reserved for shipping costs eBay fees things like that and then anything left over will be redonated to Lost Boys Hope if that 50% balloons over for shipping costs, I'll just eat the shipping costs. So guaranteed 50% will be going to the rescue, if not more, hopefully more. Um, with that being said, there is a direct donation link. If you're not interested in the eBay option, I'll leave that in the description and on screen here, as well as the website that I've been showing on screen here as well. You can see some of the dogs for adoption. So if you're in the area or know anybody in the area, please do feel free to check them out and consider adopting a dog through the organization. All right, we can get started. I have my One X Player X1 Intel device and my One X Player Joy-Cons and connector that are compatible with the One X Player X1. And here is the connector. I'll bring this up here for you to see. And you can see here, this is the on button and this is the pair button. The USB-C connector is here as well for charging and we can turn this around and there is a lever that we can pull out and the dongle, the USB type A dongle is here. And so we'll put that down and we're going to use that in a moment. So let's get started with connecting the connector with the Joy-Cons to the X1. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the dongle into the X1's USB, USB type A and then I'm just going to go ahead and take my connector here with the Joy-Cons. I'll start with the left one and I will just position it to where it will connect, but I will need to slide down. And I'll do the same thing with the left hand side. So they are both connected and I'm going to press the on button, which is the button to the left on the connector. 
So as you can see, the lights, the RGB lights turn on, and then I see a solid blue light for the on button and a solid green light for the pair button. For the blue light on the on button, if you connect a USB-C cord to the USB-C connection on the connector or Thunderbolt cord, then you are going to see that this blue light is going to flash every two seconds, indicating that it is charging. If you see that the blue light is rapidly flashing, that means it is low battery. So, all right, let's talk about what we can do, some shortcuts with the connector. As you can see, the RGB lights are on. What we can actually do is we can hold the button here it is on the right Joy-Con. It is the top button. It has the three vertical lines. And we can hold this down and we can also tap the right bumper. And as you can see, the lights are going to change as I do that. So you will cycle through the options for the lights. Another option or shortcut rather is to use the connector with the Joy-Cons as a mouse and keyboard. So what we can do is we can hold down this button here on the right Joy-Con. This is going to be our keyboard button. And if we hold it down, you're going to see that there is an orange light here. And then what we can do is we can use the left joystick. And as you can see on my X1, you will see the mouse cursor here. And we can actually hover over to some of the icons and we can select these with A if we want to. We can also just anywhere on the screen, we can hit B and we can right click and we can select one of these options with A if we would like to do that. If we want to bring up the keyboard, we can also do that as well by hitting the keyboard button. And as you can see, our keyboard is there on the bottom, but we can hold down A and we can use the left joystick and we can actually move that to wherever we would like on the screen here. And also if we want to, let's say we are not close to our X1 and we want to access the quick menu for the One X console, what we can do is we can go here to our show hidden icons and we can then select A here and then we actually bring up the quick access menu here and then we can select the arrow here to get rid of that if we would like. We can select the keyboard button to get rid of the keyboard as well. And if we would like to get out of the keyboard, mouse and keyboard mode, we can just hold down the keyboard button here for approximately five seconds. And then as you can see, we no longer are able to navigate the mouse with the left Joy-Con here. We're no longer seeing it on the screen. All right, what I would like to next show you is the website Gamepad Tester. And the reason I want to show you this website is because you can use this site to see if your Joy-Cons need to be recalibrated, especially with your connector. But the connector is not required. You can have the Joy-Cons connected to the left and the right to see whether you need to calibrate your Joy-Cons as well. But just looking down here, we see the Xbox controller layout for our Joy-Cons and I can press a button like the A button and I will see that indicated on the screen. But what I specifically wanna pay attention to are the axis areas. What those values indicate is whether the circle here is as close to the center as possible as if it is slightly out, as you can see I'm doing on my left Joy-Con, you're going to see these values here they are going to be different than the 00, 0002 or 00392 value there. But so if they are slightly off on each side, then this can require a calibration so that they can be center. And if you would like to do that, then what you can actually do with your Joy-Cons here connected to the connector or on either side if you would like, is to hold down the two top buttons on the left and right Joy-Con. So holding these down for approximately five seconds. And what you are going to see is the keyboard light. It is an orange light. It is going to, to be a solid orange. And then what you are going to want to do is take your Joy-Con, your, excuse me, your joysticks, and you are going to want to extend them 
as far out as they will go and you will want to turn them three times. And you can always do this again if you don't do it perfectly. Upon doing that, then you will want to press the triggers down three times. And then after that, you will want to press the Y button there and pressing the Y button will end the calibration. All right, so what I would like to do now is go into the One X console and explore the control layout options with you. Okay, all right, so we have our general layout here and we can see our different controls that are programmed for each of the buttons. Do note that with the connector, at least this is what I am experiencing, the back buttons are not going to be operational when connected, when the Joy-Cons are connected to the connector, but the back buttons here, specifically these M buttons, are going to be operational when they are connected the Joy-Cons are connected to the X1. So do keep that in mind if you are wanting to use your back buttons while on the connector. I am at least not able to find a way to do that. So let's take a moment now to talk about setting macros. Okay, so I have my Joy-Cons connected to my X1, and this means that I have the ability to operate the M buttons on the back. So let's program a macro. I'm going to go down to the macro program area and select A, and then I'm just going to edit or record a macro. And so what I can do here is I can select the start record. So let's say I want to program a specific combination for a fighting game that may be X, X, Y, A, B. So I would select X, X, Y, A, B, and we can actually adjust the release time and the action internal delay time as well. And then I would select the stop button there and that would stop the macro recording. And then I will select save to save the recording. And as you can see, the default value for the release delay and the action interval delay is 20 milliseconds, but we could adjust that if we wanted to. So now we have our macro one program and what we can do is we can return to general and then let's say, I'll just go to the M2 button at the bottom right here and I'll select M2 and then I will go to the macro area and I will select macro one and then hit A, excuse me, hit A to select that and then select set mapping. So this is the stylus. If you did order this to go with your X1 and the options that you have are within Windows 11 as far as customization with it. So what you can do is on the right hand side of the start menu you can select it looks like an icon here that looks like a stylus you can bring this up and for me it's showing the one note it is showing the whiteboard program it is showing the snippet tool it is showing a journal tool and then a settings tool and then if i select settings i can see i can edit the pen menu and the pen settings and then there is a question mark there for help so we can go to pen settings as well, and this is going to bring up the Windows 11 pen settings. And so as you can see, the stylus shows that there is a shortcut button and a side menu button. So here is the side menu button, but there is no shortcut menu button with this stylus here. So that is not something we are going to be able to use. Now the side button, if you are interested in using that, I have found a way to be able to do that. But here you can show whether you want to use it with your left or right hand as well. So to customize this side menu, what I found to allow me to be able to do that is to find this program here called the tablet pro pen software and it is available in microsoft store you can actually get it as a free trial and not pay the 4.99 i think it is for it but the barrel button is what specifically you want to customize on this software 
And for me, the, the there are some options here like Control, Alt, and Shift, but the screen grab option has been convenient for me to use. To demonstrate doing a screen grab, what I can do is I can just hold down and then press twice with, I hit the barrel button or the side button twice, and then I can just select the camera button here. And I can just do the whole screen if I want to like that. And then there is my screenshot here that I was able to take. So that is something that you can do, for example, with the software that I showed you if you are interested in making use of this side button or bar or barrel button there. First, we can just tap anywhere. So if we want to tap on an icon, we can do that simply doing that. If we want to do the equivalent of a right click, then we can just hold down on the screen and then our menu for right clicking is going to appear and we can select these options just by tapping on the screen and then tapping again to clear the right men the the menu from right clicking all right so we are coming to the conclusion of this video and you may have noticed a certain co-star on this video and that co-star is the 3d printed rabbit sent over from cppc tech thank you cppc tech for sending this 3d printed rabbit and i am going to call the rabbit daisy so daisy is going to be in videos to come as well so let me know in the comments, are you enjoying the connector and what games are you playing in using your connector with the Joy-Cons attached? I'm looking forward to reading in the comments what you have to say. Now that we have reached the conclusion of this video, let me share with you some important channel content you don't want to miss. Gaming for Insight is a member and one of the founders of the Handheld United Discord server and YouTube channel. You can find me and other channels you want to know about on this server. So join us on Discord, see the invite to the server in the video description. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to these other channels for additional content on gaming, handheld devices, and more. Those are Gamer's Generation, your friendly AI with a sense of witty humor that uploads informative reviews, tutorials, and more. OKS Gamer, you can find the latest and more than OKS reviews on gaming handhelds and benchmarks as well as videos on performance with certain drivers. CPPC Tech, known for his awesome mod on the ROG Ally, this channel has reviews and more on gaming handhelds and accessories. Windeck Tech, find candid and informative videos on gaming and the tech space with gaming handhelds and more. Handheld Hardware, formerly known as Project SBC, get the latest perspective from an astute programmer, designer, and reviewer on gaming devices. Now, wouldn't it be neat if all of these channels, including mine, all got together in one place for, say, a podcast to share our knowledge on everything handheld gaming? Well, as a matter of fact, we do. Subscribe to the Handheld United YouTube channel and don't miss our live weekly podcast that I host on Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join in the live chat where you can comment on what we discuss and partake in our trivia nights. Links to the YouTube channels mentioned are in the description of this video. So with that, in the words of Commander Shepard from Mass Effect, I should go.